Hello, we are backstage at Ignite London, which is an event put on by Hay House Publishers, bringing together the freshest voices in spirituality and well-being. And just to let you know that it is quite busy about, so it might get a little bit noisy at times. So we're sitting here today with Sandy Newbigging, who is the author of five books and has appeared on TV and radio all over the world. Um, Sandy, I believe it to be true that when he trained as a meditation teacher, he meditated day and night for 24 hours? 24 weeks. 24 uh, uh, weeks. For 24 weeks <laughs> for about 18 hours a day on, oh on, 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 even, on occasion. Mm, so it wasn't yeah. every time. That's wow. even more but, drastic than I thought. <laughs> yeah. So thankfully he's done the hard work for us and hopefully he's going to share some nuggets for us today on that. Here's hoping. Here is hoping. So firstly, um, we'd just love to know a little bit about how you got into this, into this work and you know, how was your life before and how has the meditation and personal development that you've done, how has that improved your life? To be honest, the, if you looked at my external life before meditation, mm -hmm. after meditation, the external life looks pretty much the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. it appears to have ramped up on a few levels. You know, I'm here, for example, talking on a pretty big stage and I've got mm -hmm. books out with different publishers. But the, the, the actual what I was doing on a daily basis or what I'm doing on a daily, daily basis is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. However, what meditation has done for me is given me a new relationship with my life. Mm -hmm. So what I am doing is actually much more enjoyable because I'm actually showing up for it uh, because I'm more able to be more present now than I was in the past, constantly in my mind, judging it left, right and centre. Mm -hmm. You know, long story there. But essentially, the good news actually is that life on the outside doesn't necessarily have to transform drastically for you to have a much better experience of life on the inside. Mm -hmm. Which I believe is quite a lot what you guys are all about, yeah, isn't totally. it? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So your new book, Mind Calm, yes. that's published with Hay House, uh -huh. um, you suggest in that that stillness and silence is um, possibly the solution to many of our problems. Yeah. And just for a lot of people watching who may not be familiar with meditation, what's the benefit of stillness and silence in everyday life? It's a very good question. I mean, it's a huge question. Um, when, we, when, when I first heard about stillness, inner silence, inner stillness, it sounded a bit boring, to be honest, you know, because I was really enjoying the movement. I wanted activity, I wanted entertainment, I wanted that sort of life. But what I discovered was that if I tried to find all my fulfillment on the outside from entertainment or buying stuff or whatever, mm -hmm. um, where I was living, the job I was doing, all that sort of stuff, there was still a part of me that felt I was lacking something. Like I always had this eternal, unrelievable itch that there must be more to life than this. Mm -hmm. What happened when I rediscovered the inner presence of stillness, the inner presence of calm, which is what consciousness feels like, which is what conscious awareness is, is, is like, it's still and it's silent and it's peaceful. What I discovered is that this sense of lacking, the sense of there's something must be more to life than this, uh, was content in that moment. I didn't need more than what I had right now. And I found contentment through finding myself, essentially. <laughs> essentially, we've got this mind and it's movement. But you exist even when you're not having thoughts. Um, one of the games I like to play with people is that I get them to shut their eyes for 30 seconds and count their thoughts. And when they're counting their thoughts, they might have, say, 15, 20 in a, in a 30 second period. Yeah. But they all have more than one thought, which means their thoughts are temporary. And also, some of them had space between their thoughts. There was moments when thoughts weren't happening. So that tells us that we're not our thoughts. Mm -hmm. We have thoughts, we have this voice in our head, but we are not our thoughts. We are not this voice in our head. But we can rely on that voice to dictate our day, to, to dictate our mood, to tell us how good we are, to tell us how lovable we are, to tell us how sexy we are. And if we rely too heavily on that voice, we can have a major identity crisis because we end up thinking we're someone and something that we're just not. So stillness is the silent solution because when you get to know stillness, in other words, when you get to know this presence of consciousness, this mm -hmm. awareness within you, well, your relationship with all the temporary thoughts and emotions and physical sensations and your life in general totally transforms. And so everything on the outside becomes a bonus. Mm. You don't need it uh, mm. to be happy. Mm. You already find that you are remarkably. Mm. You know? Yeah. And actually following on from that, so we kind of talked about the insides and outsides thing and, and one of our big um, kind of philosophies really with Addictive Daughter is that if you focus on your mm. insides, the outsides will take care of themselves. Mm. And what really stuck, um, stuck out for me actually in your talk was that, that whole, it's never enough mm. and or 
I will be happy when. Mm. Yeah. And so could you just um just kind of go over what you mentioned about the car? I really remember that car thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's that. such a good example. Because, yeah. You know, most people might think it would be lovely to own a convertible. And I was lucky enough to get a big book deal a few years ago, mm -hmm. which enabled me to go into a shop and buy one. Mm -hmm. um, would be do for me. It might sound good. And, but the reality was when I sat in this car, I had about five seconds of like, yeah, this is really nice, you know, looking around at my purchase, it mm -hmm. felt good. But then I noticed a little scratch on the side panel and I remember to this day the thought, oh, I'll be happy when I get that fixed. And it was just such a perfect example of how the mind left its own devices and, and letting it play its games that it tends to play. It usually gives us a few moments of joy and happiness, but mm -hmm. usually, eventually, I only had five seconds that day. Sometimes you might get a night out and have a good time. But eventually, it finds something that needs fixed, changed and improved before mm -hmm. I can be truly happy, yeah. truly satisfied. Yeah. And that, that's a trick of the mind, that mm -hmm. I need to fix, change and improve stuff before. That will go on forever because that's the game the mind plays. Mm -hmm. And so instead of having to stop the mind doing its games, because that's what it does, mm -hmm. I encourage people to change the relationship with their mind. Learn how to let the mind have its opinion, like, yeah, I'll be happy when I get that scratch mm -hmm. fixed. But you don't have to take it so seriously. We don't mm -hmm. have to be governed by that voice. We can see it and not be it. And that's mm -hmm. really my main invitation for people is to see the mind, but don't be governed by the mind. Mm -hmm. You know, see the mm -hmm. thoughts, see the judgments, but don't be the judger. Mm -hmm. Because if you can see the judger saying, oh, I'm fat today. But if you can see that thought, it doesn't have such a big impact than if you are the judger and I'm fat today. It's a total different experience because mm -hmm. here you're feeling your thinking. Here you're observing thought. Mm -hmm. And that is totally a total different example, mm -hmm. you know, a total different experience really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit like what Mastin Kip was saying from The Daily Love. He was saying, you know, what... Um, it, we, we, the pain, the suffering kind of comes from when we identify like I am poor, I am a drama queen, in my case. Um, I am fat, whatever it is. But actually yeah. if you step back and detached from that, and you can see that that's not your identity, that's, we're, we're actually putting a judgment on top of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'd say the ultimate problem, I don't, you know, I, I don't like to generalize, I'm very conscious not mm -hmm. to, but really, I, I see it time and time again, I've got clients all around the world, I've trained practitioners in my methods from Melbourne to Montreal to Mexico City. Mm -hmm. People are using these techniques all around the world. And I see it time and time again, that ultimately, people, if they've got a problem, they're having an identity crisis. They, have, they believe they're someone or something that they're not. Mm -hmm. And they have forgotten temporarily who they really are. Mm -hmm. They've left the presence of being, because they're a human being. They've left being consciously aware of the present moment. And they've gone into a story in their mind. A little bit like a superhero. You know, like one minute they're just normal. The next minute they put this cape on and suddenly they are this idea of themselves. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and when you come back to the present moment, when you remember who you really are, the permanent aspect of yourself, naturally, your relationship with life heals. And although the tagline of the book is, you know, the modern day meditation technique that gives you peace with mind, which is what mm -hmm. we're talking about yeah. here, mm -hmm. learning how to be at peace with your mind, ultimately what you discover is that when you get peace with your mind, in other words, you get peace with your thoughts about your body, mm -hmm. you get peace with your thoughts about your emotions, you get peace with your thoughts about life, when you get peace with your thoughts and emotions about life, you get peace with life. Mm. And when you're at peace with life, you experience love with mm. life. It's the same, same. You start to fall back in love with your life and you start to feel held and loved throughout your day. And honestly, like, I have big goals, but they're a bonus. They're mm. not the destination, mm -hmm. you know? Mm. Well. Mm. Um, so our last question was that your book is called Mind Calm. The talk today was called Mind Calm. <laughs> and uh, we were going to ask you for some nuggets from your talk, but you've already imparted so many. If you had to <clears> squeeze <throat> out one more nugget... <laughs> squeeze out <laughs> one more nugget? That's like sore. That's not that <laughs> <laughs> what would that nugget be? <laughs> um, that nugget would be... Uh, if you want to be yourself, and if you want to experience peace, and happiness and, and more love in your life, yeah. you need to show up in the moment in space and time when you can experience stuff. And the only time you can experience anything is right here, right now. So the golden nugget I'd like to squeeze out um, <laughs> is it's so important to be here now yeah. through the doorway of resting in your being. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's great. 
<laughs> you got to learn how to be here now by resting in your being. Resting in your being. Yes, well done for trying to say it so that you don't keep laughing. It's a very good strategy. Well, nugget. <laughs> but well, golden nugget. The reason I say this is because the, the, the thing I discovered when I was doing all these hours of meditation was that there's no such <clears> thing as a present moment thought. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you want to get present, you have to learn how to think less. Because even if you're sat there thinking, okay, so I'm watching this video and I'm here in my room and stuff, you're still one step removed from life because you're thinking about life. You see that? Yeah. You're one step removed. Even if you're thinking about life, you're, you're kind of thinking about life. You're not actually present, directly yeah, mm. experiencing life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's the equivalent of being at a party and thinking to yourself, am I having fun yet? Well, to be honest, when you're thinking, am I having fun, you're not actually having fun. Yeah. You're, you're having fun when you're in the party, having a laugh, dancing, joking, having a drink or whatever. You're not there thinking about, are, are you having fun? Yeah. Do you see the difference? Yeah, 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 so right. one is thinking about life and one is living. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to live, uh, if you really want to wake up to true... Uh, th there is more to life than this. You know, you, if you really want to experience that more to life, you have to get present enough to experience it. Mm -hmm. And so... Again, it comes back to mind to calm because the mind, if you're going to think all your time, you're going to end up thinking about the past and future. Mm. There's no such thing as a present moment thought. You need to learn how to let go of the mind and come back to your conscious awareness. Come back to the aspect of you, the aspect of yourself that lives within you that is present and aware of the present moment occurring. There's an aspect right now where you guys, look, something looking at me from behind your eyes, the still silent watcher, which is eternally mm. present. Mm -hmm. Now that is can be right here, right now, or it can we can put that and get distracted by the movement of our mind and start thinking mm -hmm. about what's happening now. Yeah. You yeah. see the difference? One, we're here and we're alive, we're awake and we're in awe. Another one, we're kind of in the mind and we can end up in judgment, resistance, attachment, past mm -hmm. and future. And we kind of have a sleepy, uh, meander, daydream through life. This is like waking up, guys. It's, mm. it's so exciting. It's like, mm. it's like someone turns the lights up louder, if that makes any sense. No, Brighter. Yeah. The yeah. sounds Brighter. become louder. Yeah. Uh, the feelings become more intense. It really, when I learned this, it really felt like I, I had a second rebirth, rebirth mm. really. Yeah. And uh, it's really exciting. It reminds me, actually. Um, we used to be actors. We met at drama school. And a lot uh. of the time, I, I was actually telling Joey just before we started the interview that I'd be on stage and I'd be, <laughs> I'd be so conscious of like, oh, what are the audience thinking? And I'm, you know, and it's like I have this. I'm, I'm, and, and this, I'm pretending to be this character, and I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm judging myself and trying to wonder yeah. what they're thinking. Exactly. And a lot of, you know, that happens a lot in in in, in um in performance thing a lot of actors really understand that but there are those rare moments where you completely lose yourself because you're so present yeah and that's always that's the aim really that's the yeah. goal and you and become that character yeah, don't you? yeah in that yeah. moment there's not a person acting there's just you're being that person yeah, for a moment. yeah. and this is what i want for you i want them to be themselves yeah i don't want them to act their way through their life yeah. be a character that they think other people want them to mm. be trying to perform so they get love or attention or prestige or possessions mm -hmm. i want to be able to be themselves because mm. what they discover is when they can be themselves they inherit the kingdom. Yeah. They get everything they possibly wanted anyway. And it's so simple. We just have to learn how to stop being a human doing and start being a human being. Well, that's the nugget I think we should end on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Sandy, where can, um, where can people watching find out more about you? If you go to uh, mindcalm.com. <laughs> just read out. Yeah. What's my book called? <laughs> <laughs> but if you, if you go to mindcalm.com, you can actually pop your little email address in there. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs> and uh, it'll take you through to the little sec private section of my website where you can, I teach you the first step of mind calm meditation. Mm -hmm. And that really is the, the best place to start. Yeah. Uh, because then you can have a first hand experience of what you guys experienced today mm -hmm. of that still mind. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you can take it from there if you want to. But I want you to get into the experience of mind calm as, as soon as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have time to waste. We've, mm -hmm. We wasted enough time thinking about the past and future. Mm -hmm. It's time we get present, it's time we get experiencing. So go to mindcalm.com and you can find out where to buy the book and do an online course if you want. Um, courses. Social media as well? Loads of... Yes. <laughs> My name, Twitter handle, what, at Sandy Newbeking? I, I don't it. know me. That, <laughs> it. I know, it's Sandy C. Oh, is it? Yeah, Newbeking. I don't oh, I don't know. I think it's Sandy yeah. Newbeking. I think it's Sandy Newbeking. No. Oh, I'm God, really it's not C. I've yeah, been tweeting the wrong person. I just changed it recently. Oh, just okay. <laughs> yeah. So you Twitter, must know now. Sandy Newbigging. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, tw Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash mind detox man. Oh. Because I do mind detox as well. Cool. So okay. Another, maybe for another day. Another right? day. <laughs> another day. Sandy, thank you very much for uh, Q and, Q &A with us. <laughs> My and pleasure. And thank you for listening. <laughs>